In this video, I'll prove the ratio test for convergence and divergence of series. The ratio test says that for a series, if the limit of the absolute value of the ratio of consecutive terms is equal to a number L that's less than 1, then the series is absolutely convergent, and therefore convergent. If, however, the limit of the absolute value of the ratio of consecutive terms is a number L that's bigger than 1, or is equal to infinity, then the series is divergent. Although I didn't write it here, if the limit is equal to 1 exactly, or if the limit doesn't exist, then the ratio test is inconclusive and can't be used to establish convergence or divergence. To prove that the ratio test works, let's first assume that the limit is less than 1. This means that if I graph n on the x-axis and my absolute value of the ratio of consecutive terms on my y-axis, I get a bunch of dots that settle at a value of L. And this number L is less than 1. Let's pick a tiny number epsilon so that when I add epsilon to L, I'm still less than 1. So I'll pick epsilon greater than 0 such that L plus epsilon is less than 1. By the definition of limit, if I go far enough to the right on the x-axis, all of my red dots are going to be trapped in between this epsilon interval around L. In mathematical symbols, this means there exists a number capital N such that the absolute value of ratios, the thing that's limiting to L, is between L plus epsilon and L minus epsilon for all little n bigger than or equal to capital N. I'm going to multiply all three sides of this inequality by the absolute value of a sub little n. Now I'm going to focus on the right end of the inequality because ultimately I want to prove that my series is absolutely convergent. So it's going to be more useful to show that my terms are smaller than things than to show that my terms are bigger than things. This inequality is true for all values of little n that are bigger than or equal to capital N. So in particular, it's true when little n equals capital N. The inequality is also true when little n is equal to capital N plus 1. Here I've just plugged in capital N plus 1 for little n here. And when I plug it in here, I end up with capital N plus 1 plus 1, which is capital N plus 2. Now if I string these two inequalities together, essentially I'm substituting in this inequality right here. I get the following inequality, which simplifies to give me the absolute value of A sub capital N plus 2 is less than L plus epsilon squared times the absolute value of A sub capital N. Let's try this one more time. Going back to my original inequality here, I'm going to plug in capital N plus 2 for lowercase n. And stringing these two inequalities together, I get that this is less than L plus epsilon cubed times the absolute value of A sub capital N. And in general, the same reasoning shows that the absolute value of A sub capital N plus I is less than L plus epsilon to the I times the absolute value of A sub capital N for any I. With all these inequalities, I'm gradually building up two series. The first series is the series, the sum of the absolute value of A sub capital N plus I. Let's start that from I equals 1 to infinity. And the second series is the sum of L plus epsilon to the i times the absolute value of a sub capital N. Again, let's start from i equals 1 to infinity. Now this second series is a geometric series where r is equal to L plus epsilon, which is less than 1 because remember we chose epsilon to make sure that it was less than 1. Therefore, this series converges.
But that's great news, because now looking at this inequality, we can show that series one converges just using the ordinary comparison test and recognizing that these terms are bigger than or equal to zero. So series one converges by the comparison test, but series one is just the tail end of the series, the sum from n equals one to infinity, absolute value of a sub little n. So this series converges because it's just finitely many terms added on to a convergent series. And so we've shown that our original series converges absolutely. This proves the first part of the ratio test. Now let's prove the second part and let's start by assuming that the limit is greater than one. This time, since L is bigger than one, we can pick a tiny number epsilon so that when we go down from L by epsilon, we don't go as far as the number one. So we're gonna pick an epsilon greater than zero such that L minus epsilon is still greater than one. As before, we can use the definition of limit and a little algebra to get the same inequality as we got before. This time, I'm gonna focus on the left side of the inequality though. Since L minus epsilon is greater than one, this tells me in particular that the absolute value of A sub N plus one is always bigger than the absolute value of A sub little n for little n bigger than or equal to capital N. This means that the absolute value of a sub capital N is less than the absolute value of a sub capital N plus one, which is less than the absolute value of capital a sub capital N plus two, and so on. And so my sequence of terms is actually ultimately an increasing sequence of positive numbers. So my sequence of terms cannot converge to zero. Limit as little n goes to infinity, absolute value of a sub little n cannot be zero. And so the limit as little n goes to infinity of a sub little n cannot be zero either. But that means that my original series cannot converge, it has to diverge by the divergence test. We still have one detail to consider, the possibility that the limit of the absolute value of ratios is infinity. In this case, the argument that we just used works almost exactly the same. If we assume that the limit is infinity, then we can skip this part here and here, and just note that there exists some capital N such that the ratios are always bigger than, say, two for all little n bigger than or equal to capital N. Since if the ratios are heading towards infinity, they're certainly gonna be bigger than two eventually. This gives us the same inequality that we need. I'll just write a two there. And now as before, we can conclude that a sub n plus one's absolute value is strictly greater than a sub n's absolute value. In fact, it's greater than twice of it for all little n bigger than or equal to capital N. And we can make the same conclusion about an increasing sequence of positive terms that so that the terms can't go to zero and the series has to diverge by the divergence test. This concludes the proof of the ratio test. In this video, we proved the convergent part of the ratio test by comparing our series to a convergent geometric series. And we proved the divergent part of the ratio test using the divergence test.